Hello everyone, and welcome back to Dog and Parch, the place of own fine craft ales, brew day. Yes, today we are brewing Son of a Pumpy IPA from the guys at Mark Miller. The reason why we're doing that is because they sell that kit as two 19 week batches, which I'm going to try and make in the new Grandfather S40. Now, I've just been eating some water up in there to, 30, uh, to 66 degrees. That's nearly done, so we're going to be adding the rain in a moment. I just want to show you this is my normal machine. This is my brew devil from Angel Home Brew. And this is priced at the, on the market around about 460 quid. Same price as the uh, Angel Home Brew devil with their, with their bundle. And then if you buy the bundle from Angel Home Brew, you get insulation jacket. You also get a bazooka filter in the bottom there. A couple of other extras, like a watcher, etc. Now, I did try and take the bazooka out of here and put it in into here because last time I had a problem getting the beer out. The bazooka won't fit on the bottom. The tap is that close to the bottom you can't put anything on it. So that's a little bit of a, an issue to start off with. The controls up here which is nice because now I don't have to bend down here. And uh, I'm going to see how this compares to this. Uh, I've also got it set up on a bench today. Uh, with a gap in the bench, middle of the bench, and the reset button on this is directly over that gap. So should anything go wrong, I can press the reset button. Right, we're going to add the grain. So here we are, and we're just about to add the grain. Just like to show you, we've put um, 30 litres of water, just over 30 litres of water in there. It's now at 66 degrees. I'm getting the grain basket, I'm going to put that in. Now watch, you see these feet on the grain basket here? Do not try and take the um, grain out and then put the grain basket down on the floor because all that happens is those feet will just bend right i'm gonna add the grain nice big bag of grain marisotta from malt miller start pull that in slowly and then start turning it down and around and around and around right over the food call this Making sure we don't get no dough balls. Keep mashing and turning with your mash spoon. Now I've also got some more hot water on standby. Should there not be enough water in here, that's I've got this grain in. It all seems okay with the first bag. It isn't quite important, you don't get no dough balls. That, just get one more. That is a dough ball. We don't want that. So make sure that all the grain mash separated. Carry on like that until it's all in. Now, if it is a bit dry, don't be afraid to put some more water in it. With this particular recipe, there's no mashing volumes of what to use. So I've just guessed at around about 30 litres. These machines tend to like a wet mash anyway. And so that's all the grain stirred in. I'm quite happy with that. Now at this point, normally with the um, brew devil, I'd put the lid on. This would help keep the mashing temperature. My mashing temperature has already dropped a little bit. Uh, and then put the uh, recirculating arm on and start recirculating. With this, I've had to shorten this pipe just a little bit because with, with 10 kilos of grain in, it's, it was on top of the grain. So I'm going to start the pump. Get it down there. In the minute it's way too fast, so just turn that down to a trickle and keeping the eye on the grain. I just turn it down with this little knob button here, the lever, I just turn it down so we get a nicely covered grain, and then you want to keep it there until it starts to recirculate and there uh, doesn't hold 
for it. And we are 30 minutes into the mash. We're mashes for an hour and a half. It's all going very nicely. The, uh, I've turned up the speed on the um, mash arm. As you can see now, it's uh, mashing quite vigorously. All going well. So we've got about 20 minutes to go left on the uh, on the recirculating mash. Uh, don't forget at this point you'll probably need to get your sparge water on the go. I'm going to put 10 litres of sparge water in here and then see how we get on. See you in sparging time. Right, okay, for the last 10 minutes I had to sparge out at 77 degrees. I've removed the rotating arm out of the way and now I'm going to lift the grain basket out of the mash. Now, I suggest you stand on the platform for this. This is now 10 kilos of very, very wet grain. And I'm going to lift it onto the outside ring there and let it, uh, let it drain through. So, here we go. Let me move the stuff. Oh, oh. Now, this is where you probably need a mate. A gear now. There we go. Not easy, but doable. I'm a bit stronger than probably some. Probably helps, but that's draining through there nicely. Now I'm going to start. I'm going to start sparging. I'm simply just going to get a jug of water. I'm going to get my spoon in there, and I'm just going to pour the sparge water on the back of the spoon, so it spreads all the way over the grain. Not in one particular place. And as I said before, I'm only going to put 10 litres in there at the moment. Then I'm going to remove the grain basket. And then I might add some more. Yeah, I'll show you what how we're going to do that in a bit. There we go. And this is a two and a half litre jug. So I'm running two and a half litres at the same time. So I've got the machine on set on to boil at 100 degrees and it's just say 98 well, I've set it to 100 that way when it reaches 100 and it clicks I've still got the time to work I've got as much water in there as I want at the minute but I want to brew to maximum capacity so I'm going to take a grain basket out of here put it into this pea kettle I've got here very heavy but it does fit nicely into the pico. And then I'm simply going to spice some more water into it and get some more water and bring the full capacity up to 46. Right, so I've set the temperature as I said to 100 degrees and at the minute I'm on 87. Now I've put the lid on. I've put the lid on to help keep the temperature in there but I've really got to keep my eye on the temperature as it gets above 90 I've really got to watch it because now I've put maximum capacity in there I've um, re the grain put it into a pico then put that into there so it's now maximum capacity it's full 12 gallons so very easy to boil over I've got to be really careful I didn't put my water chiller in while it was still boiling now I've switched the machine back on, got it boiling again and put the water chiller and sanitised it. So now the water chiller is in and I'm going to start chilling. So now I've took the op spider out and the water chiller out of the, uh, out of the grain father. You can see I'm below the 11 gallon mark. Now that's 11 US gallon. So I'm about 10 and 3 quarter US gallon. Now that equates to around about 39 litres. So I've just got enough at the moment to fill two corner cakes without any wastage. Now, I would have probably liked a bigger machine. Probably, probably the 50 litre would have given me that, given me that guaranteed two corner keg. So, um, got the water chill down, got my fermenter down there, and then I'm gonna see how, how much uh, water we can get into each fermenter. All coming out pretty good at the minute. We'll see how that goes. So obviously we've got no filter on the tap. Coming out pretty strong in a minute. 
that's it, brew day done. I managed to get two fermenters of just shy of 20 litres each. Uh, so uh, we'll see, uh, just got to add them yeast and see how it goes. So that was brew day, bro. Brilliant, bro. Oh, that, oh so tell me all about it, bro. How'd it go? Well, it didn't go too bad, as you can see from the from the video, apart from the timer on the uh, grain farm. I did find that a bit annoying. Uh, when he when we were doing the mash, the timer counted down perfectly. Okay. But when I rose the temperature to boil, yeah, it got to boil and uh, just switched off. It's the counting down for an hour. It just it didn't it didn't just stop not count. It didn't just not right. not count down. It also switched the machine off. Oh, it switched off. Ping. Not ping, but it stopped heating. Okay, okay. So I I didn't realise that until the the rolling ball didn't roll anymore and the temperature went down to about 97 I think well, what's going on here so then I realized it wasn't actually counting down okay okay right yeah yeah uh, just have to raise it to 103 and uh and away we go uh, any other problems do, do, do you know what I think really if I'm honest uh, you what we are honest in the DMP if nothing else <laughs> I, I don't think the machine's big enough okay uh, it's some, somewhere down the line at, at grain farmer that I mean all these machines are made in China yes and somebody at Grand Farm was coming with the idea of making an S40, a 40 litre, yes, uh, all in one system that can brew 40 litres. So oh, yeah. you've got two corny cakes. Yeah. You can put, you know, 20 litres in each fermenter, you have a bit of sludge at the bottom, and you're going to have two 90 litre corny cakes. Okay, okay. This machine isn't big enough to do that, really. It's not quite big enough. Not quite. Mm. Not to do it properly, because I have to lift the grain basket out of the machine, put it into another vessel. Sparge, sparge and then put that water to top the grain farm up to its 46 full capacity full capacity yeah. you can't actually do it with the basket in no. it sits in the water doesn't no it? Yeah, so okay. i'd like it yeah to be a bit bigger if anything it's just, 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 just taller as big as it is yeah. but it, it's not like it's like somebody like i say somewhere down the line you know they've come up with this idea and then somewhere between grain farmer and the people who made it kind of got lost in translation okay okay on that toyota Siron that came out <laughs> it's right. stallion. We need a machine that makes forty liters. Well, this doesn't quite do it. Doesn't quite do it easily, shall we say? So, would you recommend it? Would you use it again? I'd use it again. Yeah, yeah, I'd use it again. Just now, you know what to do with it. I know, so I know what to do yeah. with it. Yeah, but uh, like I said, one of those, one or two of those little problems are, you know, just just annoying more than anything. Okay, okay. Well, I think it could have been better. Right, yeah. I mean, the timer on my on my brew devil yeah. works fine. It gets hundred. It pings, it counts down. It's count down. So when I need to add ops, I know exactly. You can have a look, yeah. When I need to add ops, because it's okay. on the counter, yeah. counting down. It's, if my recipe says ops at 30 minutes, I think, oh, 30 minutes on the machine, pop, in you pop, go. in you go. Got your watch. Fair enough. Okay, okay. Dot pop, dot pop. So a little thing, though, but it could be improved. Yeah. It could be improved. It could be improved. Be could could be improved. improved. Yeah. yeah. Same cool. as the size. You could have just had that a right. little bit more room at the time. And do, do, are we going as far as giving it a marks out of 10? <laughs> um, I go for a yeah, ten if I was going to give it a mark. There you go, cool. Because I can't really see the point of making a machine that's not quite big enough for the job. Right, yeah, okay. I mean, it's, it says even even says on the box, good, good, brilliant for making twenty three and thirty litre batches. Well, the Brew Devil does a thirty two litre batch, gets you twenty three litres. Yeah. I can't see the point if you're going to go for a bigger machine, go for a bigger machine. Bigger machine it's yeah. going to do twice as much. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, cool. That's it. Lovely jubilee. Thank you very much. Until next time, it's a good bye from him. And it's a good bye from him. To the room. room.